Hey, welcome back to Vortex Garage. And you can see we're nerding out a little bit with some different camera setups. And uh, we're gonna try this out, take you along and just show you some of the goofy little stuff that we're doing today uh, and make a video as we go along. So let's uh, turn this one around. Wait, I think it's gotta go this way. I got our messy workbench here and I got two things that came in the mail. One, I've been meaning to get one of these for a while and I finally uh, did it and picked up one of these belt sanders, uh, an air belt sander. Didn't want to get the one from Harbor Freight, so I wanted to step up. Where is my razor blade? I need my razor blade. Here's one. Can you believe how messy this place is? I am such a messy person. Everyone thinks I'm organized and I'm absolutely not. I just feign it every once in a while. This is an Astro Pneumatic. Great, drop that. Drop the belts here. Comes with a couple little sanding belts. And I also picked up some uh, replacements. This is, oh, it's already got one mounted. That makes life easy. So I'll have to put a uh, air fitting in here, but this is a pneumatic uh, air sander. And this will help me get into tight areas on the Spitfire, which is sitting over here. And it'll also help with spot, spot weld grinding. I know a lot of people like to use these to grind spot welds, so I should probably just take it out of the package. So just imagine this kind of coming in. Well, let me go to one that you can probably see. This coming in, you could actually just grind away a spot weld right there with this and uh, not have to use the drill every single time. So you can also adjust this in terms of how it sits. And this will allow you to get in the tight spaces, things like that. So I've been kind of eyeing these for a while and uh, wanted to pick one up. So I went with the Astro Pneumatic one, which was a pretty mid-range price. Um, well, it's probably low mid-range, to be honest with you, in terms of price. But it's a step up from the Harbor Freight one. And, uh, well, we're going to give it a try, see how it works later this weekend. <laughs> the other thing I got, haven't opened yet, it's mail day. It was an eBay purchase. Can you even see what I'm doing? No. See, I gotta learn to adjust this down as I'm doing stuff. See, I'm learning, and you're coming along for the learning. <laughs> so this is something I needed for my daily driver. We can figure out how to open it. This was actually in another bubble wrapped package before I got to this one, so. The seller was good to wrap it up because it is wrapped up even more a replacement mirror so this is for the lincoln town car um, i don't know how it happened i don't know if somebody hit me in a parking lot uh, or if it was just a failure of the actual um, glass itself but this is an auto dimming and heated mirror and on mine it just started getting really cloudy and all of the liquid liquid crystal material, whatever it would do to, to activate the uh, dimming feature, just sort of drain to the bottom. So we'll do a video and show you how to replace this, but I did want to open it up and make sure that it looks nice. It's obviously a used piece. This was 39 bucks, so $40, which seems like a lot for a piece of glass, but it is, like you said, heated. Hey, look, there I am. It's uh, heated and uh, dimming. So, so as you look on the back, it's got a electrical connector. Looks like it's got a little ground connector right here. And then these clips that hold it in. Looks like another connector here. So it looks like connectors probably for the heating element versus the dimming element. I would imagine this is the heating element and this is probably for the dimmer, but who knows? I'm just looking at it. I've never really pulled one of these apart on this particular car. But we'll get to that. But the good news is it looks nice and clean. It doesn't have any cracks on mine. Like I said, there's like, it looks like there's maybe a crack here or this side. We'll show you when we get to it. You don't want to see all this now because we'll have a separate video. So it's very cold today. It's in the high 20s. I know some other states are having it worse than we are. Uh, we're used to getting snow this time of year, so it's not a huge deal. But we had this really interesting ice storm it was uh fortunately for us it wasn't ice that stuck to the trees and brought trees down and ruined things but it was these weird ice pellets and uh they had fallen off the roof i'll show you with the other camera basically came up over the roof uh and 
kind of stacked up and this turned in this giant chunk of ice right here let me show you this is like basically just a huge now chunk of ice this used to look like just really thick sugar actually it's like ice balls so anyway speaking of ice balls got the plow hooked up went to do the road before everything kind of melted and refroze which it did yesterday and turned a lot harder i wanted to scrape away as much as i could so i hooked the plow up and went to do that the problem is I went to lift the plow with this linear actuator that it has and uh no dice it wouldn't move and uh ended up in the evening and it light had already gone because I, I had worked and was trying to get this thing set up at least to go i ended up just driving on it on the on private road gravel road no big deal but just took it without the ability to lift it. I was able to lift it manually by turning what's in here, but let me show you what's in here. That's, that's the point. See, I'm here supposed to do something. So I can open this up. Okay, so I packed a ton of grease in here in the attempt to fix this, because basically this plastic gear stripped out and it was, it was half working, half not. So I thought maybe if I put some fresh grease and packed the grease in, I would kind of build up the pieces in between just enough to get one or two lifts out of it to get down the road and do what I wanted to do what I ended up doing was putting this in I'm going to get pretty greasy here but and turning it manually and by doing that I was able to lift this up enough and lower it enough to get down the road and back did one swipe and did what I had to do but I went ahead and took this apart and figured well maybe it's the i'll have to replace the thing see if i can find the gears i didn't really know it was pretty obvious that there used to be a gasket here that had material that was pretty much gone there was a little corner piece that was all that was left and you can even see here there was ice and water in it and that caused the old grease to turn into this like mustard looking stuff but i'm pretty sure the problem is the gear on the little motor should be fine it's metal but this plastic gear does have some worn spots in it and that's where it was slipping along this edge here so i want to come out and pull this off again because let me put the lid back on this is a thompson saginaw and i got the part number off the motor and looked it up these things are not cheap these things are somewhere between 500 and a thousand dollars if you can find them and uh replacements i'd have to take it off i'd have to measure the stroke of the actuator I'd have to check the mounting to make sure it would mount perfectly. I'd have to make sure I get the right 12 volt DC motor. Pretty much impossible. It would be a pain to find. And even then, an offshore one's looking to be about 300 bucks or more for this capacity. So took it apart again and said, well, let me go to Thompson Sag and I'll see if they got parts. They don't really seem to have them without calling them. So, well, I don't like calling people, so I'm not going to do that. So instead, I'm going to show you what I found. I think I might have found a solution. So we're going to take this in and clean it up. Whew, isn't this messy inside? I really should clean the fluid. But <laughs> there's a big difference between I really should do something and I'm going to do something. I will eventually. Okay, we'll set that right there. I don't know why I have to na narrate everything because it's usually really boring anyway. So I'm like not, not making it exciting. All right, now, I don't know if you can see there, but here's one spot where it this is where it really stripped bad. The rest of it doesn't look that bad, which kind of has me a little worried, but there are dead spots and worn spots in it. I don't know if you can see those. Let me get the other. You see that kind of worn down spot there? And as you turn it, you can see a few more damaged areas on it. I don't know how good this is going to focus, but so I'm pretty confident this nylon uh, plastic gear is, is shredded. And one would hope that one of the parts of the design is that you would want this one to go first and save the one that's on the motor shaft because it's metal. So if any of them are going to go, it's going to be this one. Now the reason for these, it's a gear reduction. So that, that particular Thompson Saginaw is an 18 to one reduction. So it gives the motor additional torque to lift up a heavy weight. So now we come over to our computer. All right, so 
hopefully you can see the screen through this camera. This is just me figuring out if this is even going to be something that works. So I went to Amazon, looked up 18 to 1 gears. This isn't the first thing I did. I actually spent a couple hours last night looking up Thompson Saginaw parts and linear actuators, and I finally stumbled happily on a picture of, of one of these. And I was like, hey, this looks like the gear. So I went to uh, click on it. It was actually, it was on the Amazon. So I did a search and was able to locate a couple of them. This particular one for $18.99 is what we're going to focus on because it has dimensions. So what I'm going to do is compare. This does not call out that it's for a Thompson Saginaw. It says it's for a, a Lippert Tucson and it's a, a slide out for a for an RV. So RV slide outs use similar actuators. But it has measurements. So let's check with our caliper if these measurements are close. And what I'm basically doing here is deciding if I want to take a $19 gamble. So I've got my digital caliper, which has tape on it because I don't know about you, I lose the little battery covers and I have to tape them up. They were zeroed out at zero, zero millimeters. So the first one is the central center hole, 4.8 millimeters. All right, that's 4.8. Look at that, we used the back piece there, 4.72, but if I hold it down and tighten it, it's 4.81. All right, that, mat, that matches. Our center sprocket, I'm gonna have to count the uh, teeth but let's at least get the measurement, 28.4 millimeters. 28.58, if I squeeze it, I could probably bring it to 28.4, pretty close to it. That's awfully close, I'd say that's close enough. All right, the larger gear, 57.1 millimeter. The nice thing too, I don't know if you can see, but it's 18 to one. So I'm, I'm assuming there's probably some commonalities of design in these things when you talk gear ratios. So let's find a nice spot that's not worn down too much. So 56.79 and we're looking for 57.1. So that's actually good because what we're guessing is that this one is slightly worn down. So if that's the case, our, the new one will be slightly wider in diameter just by a tiny bit, which will help it grab the uh, motor and the height is 22.7 millimeters so let's check that that's going to be a little tougher only because the height i'm a little less worried about because if you look they have a little raised lip on that one this one doesn't i could always grind that down if it's if it's not perfect so i'm not too worried about that let me just get this where try to get it straight and level so about like that so something close like that, 22.7. Look at that. All right. So I'm pretty confident this is, this is the right one. So the only thing that I really want to do, all right, I got a little speck of dirt on this sprocket right here. I don't know if you can see that or this uh, tooth of the gear. Let me uh, count around. So I, I won't count that one. I'll count it when I come back. So one, two, three. 2, 23, 24, 25. I thought it said somewhere here, yeah, here it is. Larger teeth count 25. Small teeth count 85. <laughs> that looks like 85 to me, right? I suppose I could count them. Let's see if I can. All right, so there's a mark. I won't count that one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 85, was it 86? This moved. Small teeth count 85. I think this was actually there. So I think that is 85. So, all right. I'm actually pretty confident that this is it. So uh, I'm not logged in on this computer, but I'm going to hop on my phone. And uh, I'm pretty sure this is Prime. And it is going to show up Monday or Tuesday. So maybe this one isn't. Fastest delivery Friday, February 26th. Right now it's February 20th, I think. Um, but there's a bunch of these on there. One of them I had on, saved on my phone. I'll validate that it has the same specs. And if so, I'll order that one that's prime. It'll be here Monday or Tuesday. Otherwise, I'm going to order this one, uh, which I just validated, and it'll be here in a week or so.
Hey, so we are back. Uh, all the video you just saw was actually shot on Saturday morning, and we had these grand plans of doing all this cool stuff and catching you up with the camera to show you how it went. Well, how it went is I ended up having to do a lot of stuff for the day job and uh, ended up working with that the entire weekend and didn't do anything else in the shop after cutting that video. This is the way it goes sometimes, right? So here we are, it is now Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday evening, and it's the first chance we've had to come out and do anything. And the reason I pulled the camera out is because we got this in the mail. So this is our new replacement gear for our plow. And well, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the other camera on, we're gonna go outside and we're gonna see if this fits and see if it fixes our problem. We're gonna bring you along for that. All right. So here's the big test. Well, let me show you on this one. Seems to be meshing, but seems to be a little floppy on there. I think the only way to find out is to close her up and, and see how it does, because this might latch into the piece on the top and hold this a little steady. But this whole pin right here seems loose. The gear looks okay there, but I feel like, see that movement right there is going to keep it from going. You know what it is? I feel like, too, that little ridge right there so we're back at our little table here. Let's just take this out and check our measurements. Okay, and then let's check this one. Yeah, see that? This little ridge right here, whoops little ridge right there I'm pretty sure it's riding up on that and that's what's causing it to to rock back and forth so what we're going to do we're going to pop over to the bench grinder we're just going to shave that off right there it's going to be super quick like i'll even put my my eyes on Hey, it's effectively gone. It's like a tiny, tiny little bit, but otherwise it's gone. So let's put this on. I'll bring this camera with me. Let's not slip on the ice. see if that goes a little bit better oh yeah like it doesn't rock as much and it feels like it's nice and tight so you know, I still got a bunch of gross grease packed in here but really I just want to test this if this ends up working today then what I'll do is take this whole thing apart clean all the gears 
really I just want to see if it's going to work. Right. Oh yeah. I've got a got a battery disconnect on this. Let's go into the cab of the truck and we'll try it out. Okay, so what I got to do here, I'll put the key in. So I got the camera out there still, which is cool, but let me put this key in. So I have to turn my lights on in the front because I actually wired the plow the trigger for the relay for the plow is wired into this light circuit and it was just a really quick thing to get this down the road for the winter and i think one of my lights is burned out or it's uh they're cheap lights probably got water in it all right so i can see on my front cam so let's uh let's see oh yeah it's working perfect i don't hear any slipping And that's the li the limiter, so that's at its top. That's all the way down. And that's lifted all the way up. Cool. Turn this off for now. So, so this is awesome for 15 bucks. Our plow is back in action and uh, all it took was that gear and a little bit of grinding on it. And uh, oh, all just in the nick of time because uh, today it's 63 degrees out, but you never know out here, even in the first couple weeks of March, you can get some snow. So we'll see how it goes. And if we need it, our plow is working and worst case, it'll be the end of the season. We'll be able to put it away, seal it up and know it'll be ready for next season. All right. We'll catch up with you in a bit. So as it turned out, this video wasn't exactly what we thought it would be, especially since it took several days to end up getting it done. But it turned out into us showing you us getting that gear working in the plow, which is pretty cool. But like I said, originally, this was supposed to be kind of an IRL start of an IRL series, which is why I got this cool little thing that I wear this GoPro with now. And the whole idea is that as I do things, I like to give nice edited videos but sometimes it takes me a while to have time to edit and get things up. So it'd be kind of cool to share a little bit more often some more raw and uncut stuff that we're doing. So maybe as we're doing work on the weekends or even in an evening, we'll grab the camera and just, even if it's a minute or two to say, hey, this is what we did and show you what it looks like, we'll be able to post that up for those of you who might enjoy that. It's not gonna stop any of our edited stuff from coming. It'll just be additional content, which is pretty cool. So let me know what you think. If you like that, we're going to add it and we'll try to keep it up. Maybe do it like a weekly thing. Who knows? Maybe even more. But knowing me, maybe even less. We'll see. We'll do the best we can and that's all that matters. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, we'll see you again here on Vortex Garage. And we'll start the fury.